Okay, so hello and welcome to this video tutorial for RC Hibbler's Dynamics textbook. So we have this set of problems from chapter 14 here. Uh, the seven parts to this problem, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Um, now, uh, I'm going to go through all of them in this video here. Um, before we get into them, uh, let's just establish what we mean by work. Uh, since the question is asking, determine the work of the force when it displaces two meters. Uh, we can take work to be the product uh, of uh, the force acting on an object times the distance that it travels in a particular direction. Okay. Um, okay. So this is a key idea. Uh, a key idea here. Uh, let's. Start with problem A then. So problem A, the box is being pushed by a diagonal uh, 500 newton force here, and it's displacing two meters horizontally uh, in the right direction. Um, my indication here would be that the only um, part of that 500 newton force that we need to consider is its horizontal component, since um, that is the only part of that. That is the component in in that force that's actually pushing uh, the box to the right. So um, I'm going to trust that you guys are familiar with this idea already. That if I, I want the uh, horizontal component of this 500 newton force, uh, I can take. I can assume it's three fifths here of that 500 uh, newtons, and I want to multiply this by the distance travelled here, uh, which will give me 300 times two. That's going to be 600 newtons, uh, 600 joules, sorry. So work is measured in, in joules since it's a, um, a unit of energy. Problem B then, uh, let's have a look. So we have this 98.1 newton force acting down on the block and we're asking what's the work done in the horizontal direction. Well, evidently there is no work being done in the horizontal direction uh, since there's nothing pushing it horizontally, right? So uh, it's almost like a trick question. The answer to that is zero, zero joules. Uh, question C. Question C is a really interesting one uh, since force here is a um, function of displacement. S here is representing displacement. Now, if I were to, well, a, a helpful way to understand this problem might be to uh, uh, kind of visualize it. So if I imagine I kind of, uh, set out some axes here where on my uh, vertical I've got F, on my horizontal I've got S, um, and we understand that F here is equal to 6S squared, then when uh, S is equal to zero, uh, the, the force here is going to be zero, right, since 6 times zero squared, that's zero. Uh, the force when S equals uh, 2, which is kind of maximum displacement here, well, 6 times 2 squared, that's 6 times 4, that's 24. Okay, so, uh, and we, we understand this is a quadratic here, so uh, we'd observe a nice kind of quadratic curve here uh, with two points lying on the curve that we know, uh, the first point being the origin, right, 0, 0, and the second point here being uh, where the force is equal to 24 and the displacement is equal to 2. Now, since we understand that work is the product of force and, and distance or displacement in this case, um, we can understand then that what we need to determine here is the area under this curve. Okay, uh, how can we do that? Well, we can make use of a mathematical uh, technique called integration, which I trust a lot of you guys are familiar with already. So we want to integrate uh, this 6s squared idea. If you're unfamiliar, we, we, you can kind of pull a constant out of um, in, integrals in this way. Um, so what we have looks like this, and uh, we, we want to calculate the area between 0 and 2 here, so we can add our bounds, 0 and 2. Um, okay, so when we integrate x uh, s squared here, sorry, um, we're going to add one to the power, so it's going to be become s cubed, and then we're going to divide by that power, so it's going to become um, a third uh, a third s s cubed, 
I'm going to um, pull the third out here um, and, and multiply the third by the, the this six. So we, we're going to land on um, two s cubed, and we we have these bounds still of two and zero. Um, so this is going to be equal to two times uh, two cubed minus zero cubed, which is just the same as two times uh, two cubed here, uh, which is going to be equal to 16 joules. OK, so we have 16 joules for part, um, part C there. Part D then. So part D is an interesting problem here. Um, we have this 100 Newton vertical force acting down on the block and the block's displacing two meters diagonally. And we also have this three, four, five triangle idea here. To calculate the work done here, what you effectively want to do is calculate the um, vertical distance that the block is traveling. So we can go ahead and do that. We understand that uh, our, our block is displacing uh, two meters diagonally. And we have this three, four, five. Tri oh, uh, we have this three, four, five triangle uh, idea here. So um, to calculate the kind of vertical uh, component here, uh, naturally it's going to be three fifths of two in this case. So let's just call it six fifths. So we note then that um, the block displaces six fifths vertically as as a, as a function of this 100 newton force here, or as a consequence of this 100 newton force. So the work done, we could describe here uh, as 100 newtons times uh, 6 fifths. That's just our force times our displacement, which will give us 120 joules. Part E then. So part E is uh, quite similar to part C in a sense. So with part C, in order to calculate the um, work done, where the force acting on the block was a function of displacement. We calculated the area under the curve where, where, where we have this uh, F and S uh, kind of uh, graph here. We, we have an FS uh, graph here too. So if we want to calculate the kind of um, work done diagonally in a sense here, uh, we can just calculate the area. So uh, this, this kind of triangle shape is going to be um, uh, a half times one times 20, that's 10. Let's just write 10 in there. And this square rectangle uh, is going to be 2 times 20. Uh, no, it's going to be 1 times 20, which is 20. OK, so uh, we've we've got um, kind of 30 uh, uh, joules of work acting in the in the horizontal, the, the diagonal direction effectively here. Um, but note that the displacement here is acting horizontally, right? So we want to consider the horizontal component that we have here, um, uh, the, uh, which is going to be four fifths, <laughs> four fifths of that 30 there, which will give us 24 joules. Part F then, so um, what's going in part F? Uh, it asks, or, or it says that, that the spring is originally compressed by three meters. Um, and, and we have this, this kind of visualization here. Um, what we're concerned with is this idea where we can say that the change in elastic potential energy uh, is equal to half K X I squared minus X F squared, where K is a spring constant that's provided in the, in the problem here. And X represents the displacement from the, 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 the equilibrium. X I, uh, that's kind of uh, initial displacement from the equilibrium and xf uh, is kind of final okay so evidently our initial uh, displacement from the equilibrium is three since the spring is um, compressed by three meters our final displacement here note is going to be one since uh, the kind of point that we're concerned with is when the spring has um, kind of uh, decompressed by two meters, since we're only concerned with the, this this two meters of displacement here. So uh, our x i here is going to be three. As I say, it's been compressed three meters from the equilibrium, 
and our final is going to be one since it's it's kind of um if it's displaced two meters there then then it's kind of one um uh meter away from equilibrium uh okay so we can say here uh the uh delta u is going to be equal to a half times uh times 10 times uh, 3 squared minus 1 squared, which is equal to uh, 40 joules. Okay. Uh, and then finally, uh, part G. This is an interesting problem. So we have a 100 newton force acting um, diagonally to the left uh, on the box here, uh, but we're concerned with its displacement to the right. Um, well, let's, oh dear, uh, let's take the horizontal component of this force then. It's going to be four fifths of 180. But no, that's acting to the left, and we're concerned with what's happening to the right. So uh, we want the negative of this. Okay, so our um, work done in this instance is going to be minus 80 joules. Okay. Uh, so that's how I'd approach all these problems here. If you have any questions or comments about them, uh, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section down below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. So part E then, um, part E we can kind of take inspiration from part C in that we understand uh, from part C that when we wanted to calculate the work done, um, we calculated the area under the curve where, where the curve is, is kind of uh, showing F against S here. We have F against S here, uh, except it's not necessarily a curve, it's more of a kind of discrete um, discrete curve. Um, so the area here is going uh, is going to provide us with um, the work done um, at least in the diagonal direction. So if we want to do that, we can just calculate the area. Uh, that's going to be um, well, if we're, if we're treating this as a triangle, we can say that's 20 times 1 times a half, that's 10. Uh, 10. And this rectangle here, well, square rectangle, whatever, uh, the area of that is going to be 1 times 20, which is 20. Um, but note F is acting diagonally here, right? So we're only really concerned, we're only concerned here with the horizontal component. Uh, so we want to multiply this by 4 fifths. And this is going to give us 24 joules of work. Okay. Um, 